Yeah, thank you so, so much. Um, and um, those who don't know me, you know me as I speak, but uh, you can ask your neighbor on Zoom. <laughs> Meaning, you send a message privately to know who that's for you. But um, from all sense, even today I was in all sense, ACP Sunday, and I enjoyed it because soon we are entering. So greeting friends will do exploits. The people who know their God will do exploits. Father, we thank you that we have an opportunity to know you. And because we know you as a powerful God, a promise keeper, the one who says and sends his word and can never be squatted. We are so sure that, yes, we shall be strong, we shall rest. We shall fight battles that cannot be fought by only angels, that we shall be able to succeed because you are God who helps us to conquer other strongholds. Thank you, Lord, especially because our job is to do exploits in different spaces, businesses, in different spiritually but more so to fight your battles up to me thank you for people like Daniel who had a trust to see that beyond every description that even when we get that already so speak to us this evening I want to approach it this way who wrote this and what was the situation around his visions, even around this same personality? Because Daniel, sometimes we think he's a giant, we think he's an old man, we think that he, I think every day that Daniel was, you know, a, your network in the table. Okay. But let me straighten it up. Okay, I hope you are now getting me. So we are looking at a man who had a big challenge. The challenge was one that he was taken to captivity when he was 16, 18 years. And then when you reach a captivity, they will just rate you. They became monarchs. So you won't get the son of Tane, the son of Edinebo, all of those would be castrated at a very young age. And then the interesting part is that you have young men being exploited, okay, dominating the whole kingdom of modern world, that's Greece. We have Cyprus, we have Esther in the citadel of Susa, and for so many things. So you have people dominate, not because of their age, not because of their education, but because they know their God. And this evening, even as we talk, do you know your God? Do you know your value in the kingdom of God? You know that like Caleb and Joshua, among millions, you can be able to, the one to be remembered and to dominate the rest of the Canaan. I can assure you, God is looking for men and women. Uh, apparently not many who will be able to exploit the situations around them for himself. So who is this? Again, Daniel. So he writes this book in about 536 BC. And he was taken captive to Babylon. He was educated by Babylon. And he was among the upper class of the Jews. So when he reached Babylon, he never became like these other types of Jews who say, no, I'd rather die rather than you know, serving this king of Babylon. No, he served. And it is interesting that the name Daniel means 
God is my judge. But when he reaches Babylon, he's given a new name, Berutashaza. A possible meaning is that may bear, that was the God of um, Nebuchadnezzar, protect the king. So they saw, saw something in the name. And you know, cultures normally want to give us new names. They want to change our identity. It is, but I don't want to go there. So that's now the Dane who goes serves King Nebuchadnezzar the first time, serves his son Belshada. That's the second king. Nebuchadnezzar comes again. This man serves him. Darius comes and this man serves him. Okay. He was domineering all his years. And again, even you, in your family, you can be the firstborn. I read it actually today. You know God to make you a firstborn. In your clan, you can be the first one to be something. In this nation, we have had presidents, ministers, what? But you can be the first to be remembered for doing exploits for God. And our prayer this evening will be that God will now raise men and women and men and commission them to do exploits. And they come to explain it. So this man, they change his name. But there are three things that define this great man. One, wisdom. Daniel was wise. And actually is counted among the wise. In the Bible, you get Daniel, wise, 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 wisdom, great wisdom. But secondly, is a man of great integrity, great integrity. That when they mention people who don't cheat, who don't steal, Daniel is mentioned. And the only problem they had with him was actually his integrity. Then finally, Daniel was a man of prayer. And those three things will make you a woman and a man who does great exploits. Wisdom, applied knowledge. Of course, <laughs> again, I can't over define it, but you know, there are so many people who have knowledge. There are so many people who are saved, but they are not wise. And so the risks they take, sometimes the words they speak, do not necessarily, you know, take them to greater heights because they shut down what God wants to do amongst them. So wisdom, but also integrity. We, we, we are grappling in our church with these issues. I mean, I was praying in the morning and crying out to God that it should end. Why? Because we lack men and women of integrity. who stand to the truth and then ensure that they allow God to purge them as well as purging the church, but also the man of prayer. And I want to thank God that since, you know, COVID, we have had an opportunity to pray. Some of us, of course, can falter. We sometimes don't appear on Zoom, but it is an opportunity to pray. And so this evening, we shall pray for those three aspects within the name. Now, there was a pathetic problem that, you know, for him to write that the people who know their body will do great exploits. He never wrote it from the position of prosperity, all that things are okay. In fact, he had seen a wicked king ascending and destroying Israel, and we, we are going to see it. But this pathetic question is answered in Psalm 137, which this song which we, you know we normally sing, by the rivers of bad road, where we sat down, there we were when we remember desire. The exiles were being told to sing a song. They were demoralized. So they hung their harps up and refused to sing. And they asked, how can we sing the Lord's song when we are in a foreign land? And sometimes you ask yourself, in this marriage, in this office, in this business, can I say praise the Lord? So that's the position of Israel at that time, as this man 
was, you know, writing that the people who know their vote will do great exploits. The next verse, they will instruct many. It was as if he had simply been, you know, in the state house feeding with the people, but the situation was bad. And yet he wrote about it. So what was the problem? The problem was very big. This was now the vision in a man called Antiochus Epiphanes. Please write it so that later you may be able to know what this man meant. It is the second part of his book and his vision where he got an imaginary, an imaginary person called, again, Antiochus Epiphanes. Epiphanes means incarnate God. He called himself Antichrist, a revealed God, Epiphany, where we get the word Epiphany. And this man, you know, killed the, he killed his co-leader and became a leader. But when he reached Jewish, the Jewish nation, he destroyed so many Jews. And if you read, you know, chapter, the same chapter, chapter 11, from verse 22. Let's just pick up those tomorrow pieces. The Bible says he shall act decently, deceitfully. Secondly, he shall stop his power. Number three, those who eat of the portion of his delicacies shall destroy him. And he was destroyed by what? By his counselors. But the Bible so called calls him, the actual way we read that his heart shall be moved against the Holy Covenant, so he shall do damage and return to his own land. And while he is returning to his own land, he's returning to his riches and ships from Cyprus. Other Bible verse says from getting shall come against him, but they will turn back. They shall take away the daily sacrifice and place there the abomination of desolation. Now, this Antiochus Epiphanes, set up an image of Zeus at the temple in Jerusalem. He demanded sacrifice to this image and later desecrated the temple by sacrificing a pig. So he not only took away worship, but he took away the spirit of worship of the Jews, the sign of worship that Solomon's temple, a pig was sacrificed and an image of Zeus, his God, was set up. And now you hear, those who do wicked against the covenant, he shall corrupt with the flattery. But the people who know their God will do exploits, or shall be strong. And so when this man, Antiochus Epiphanes, standing on Jerusalem, the Jewish people were divided. Some forsook the covenant of God and said that this God of Greek works because he ran, after all, Epiphanes is powerful. And this surprise to many of us that we lack money, so the way to get money is this way. We lack school fees, the way to get school fees is this way. And so we get a culture of certain gods who have actually destroyed their very own God. And we become like kings of Israel who would send for kings like from Athelia to send them the design of gods and temples. And so, the, the message is that those who knew their God, those who stand for righteousness, will face this incredible persecution, but they will still do exploits. In other words, they will still conquer, and I will come to define what exploits is. And for many days, many people were killed. He used to say that Antiochus killed. 80,000 Jews. He took 40,000 as prisoners. Another 40,000 he sold as slaves. So 160,000 Jews were what? Were exploited. But then also he plundered the temple of Solomon, robbing approximately $1 billion of modern illustrations. So he entered the Jewish culture, the Jewish businesses, Jewish prosperity and totally wrenched havoc on it. 
ten from this man. After he's after like an antichrist, those days they called him an antichrist. Then Epiphanes later, after persecution, the Bible is now right that the people who know their God will do exploits. Homosexuality comes as just a bed. The people who know their God will do exploits. China is raining havoc. The people who know their God will do exploits. Yes, the, you know, India, other places, other forces, the modern culture, the, the postmodern culture of the, the ICT revolution, pornography, materials, lies, it is coming. But this man again is saying that the people who know their body will do exploits. So that's like the background I wanted to give it so that in the next 10, 15 minutes, we are able now to, to venture into who is these people. Then, who is their God? But then, who is this personality that is writing? And we have already seen it as done it. But the word exploits, you can use something like they have leverage over. They are strong. They do um, strange things that even when the whole world using their reason, using their experience, using their tradition, is saying you are finished. You know what this man is saying? That you are not. That you will still determine the seasons of Uganda. That you will be able to declare and things will have to happen. Now, from the beginning of the Bible, there are not many who stand and do exploits. Noah stood. The Bible says Noah was a righteous man. And God told him the whole detail on how he's going to destroy the whole world. Noah stood and saved his family. In fact, I can say he began again the mankind. So because the Adamic covenant ended with Noah, we entered the Noahic covenant. And this Noahic covenant still remains. Why? Because the people who know the God will do exploits. I pray you will become a Noah that in your respective area of influence, yes, the spirit of God will now anoint you to become a knower, that where everything is seemed to be destructive and indeed be bent for destruction, you and your family will be saved. That in pornography, homosexuality will not be our portion because the people who know their God will be exploited, will be exploited. Now, the second one is Abraham. Because his calling is also very unique. The father called, the, if you read chapter 11 of Genesis, we won't go there. The father called Terah had left all of Torridians going to Canaan. When he reached the place called Halani, he settled there, died after 205 years. But his son, at the 75 years, yeah, together with the Lord, his nephew left. The Bible says, chapter 12, at 75 years, Abraham left. The people who know the world will do exploits. And all religions, major religions of the world now, at least connect to Adam. If you talk about Christianity, if you talk about Judaism, if you to talk about Islam, they all point to the man who knew his God and he did exploit. I want to give individual examples so that the word people, you replace it with yourself, that the one who knows his or her God will do exploit. So it doesn't matter whether you are one or ten. What matters is do you know your God? And do you know that possibly even Uganda is not destroyed because of it. Because Abraham, now look at Abraham. God is about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Ignore the story of Isaac. And he says, can I hide this from my friend? Father, this evening, we pray that we shall be your friends. That you will not hide what we are about to do regarding Uganda, regarding our families, regarding our church. And that because we are your friends, 
Therefore, we shall be able to intercede for the whole nation. Let me tell you, Abraham interceded. His intercession was for the whole of Sodom and Gomorrah. And who was there? Only Lot and his wife and two daughters. And he pleads with God. God, 50, 40, 30, 20, 5. And God was saying, hmm, for the sake of the people who know their God, we will do exploits. Let me pray for you. Father, for the sake of all people on this platform, and for the sake of many of our children who will come in the future, I pray that certain things will not happen to us and to our children, our relatives and friends, simply because you are counting us among those who know you as their God and their form. Amen. Now, this Abraham pleads for Sodom. This Abraham is responded to by God in every prayer. Now, some of the, of course, some of the texts we read as if they are not prayer. But if a man is busy changing his goalposts, Lord, ten, Lord, five, it means that he knew his God. He knew the God whom he's talking to. And by the way, how did God answer him? He still saved the Lord and his household. For the sake of who? For the sake of Abraham. So the person who knew God saved Lot and his household. And Lot, you know, in his in misery, when he's running away, he says, let me go to this place called Zohar. Z-O-A-R. And because of that, Zohar wouldn't be destroyed. But where did it begin? From Abraham, my friend who is listening to me. If you can get something today, Know that God wants to begin a certain process with you. God wants to begin certain processes with you that you will be able to say one thing that yes, I serve a God who listens, that yes, I serve a God who initiates processes because I am listening quickly. If you look at his son Isaac, now. Isaac was, of course, a quiet man. He not children for 20 years. And then the interesting part is his connection with Abimelech. Now, Abimelech means king. Abimelech. So when you mention Kabaka, that's Melech. Abi is the father of the king. That's why you have Abimelech, Abimelech, Abimelech. And some people who don't know the Bible will say, this Bible is wrong because I have Abi Merik, Abi Merik. No, you have Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh. But there is Pharaoh, Ramuzes, and other types of Pharaohs. The name Pharaoh means the king of what? Egypt, Kabaka. So you have Kabaka Mutim, but there were other Kabakas. So, but what I want to tell you is that Isaac has still dominated Abi Merik. One young man, two children. Okay, he had the household, of course. But I can assure you, he determined what would be done in that land. And the Bible says when he planted Genesis 26, those who know the Lord will do exploits. The Bible says he harvested a hundred fold. And because of that, they began hating you. And so when they hate you, I, 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 okay, let me now qualify this. A wicked system shouldn't like you. In fact, when it likes you, get worried. It means you are no longer knowing you are God. A system must, must hate you because the people who know their God must do what? Exploits. And so Isaac versus Abimelech, who is stronger, Isaac. Then his son Jacob versus Laban. Jacob versus nations is around him. When they defied his daughter Dina, who is the stronger? It is Jacob. And you know, you have, you have just terrible children. But the Bible says whenever you go there, is tell the person who knows his more God will do exploits. Now, Joseph. Of course, I don't have time to enter Joseph's story. But the, the, the real thing is that this young man, 
dominated the modern world. Egypt, he knew his God. Genesis 9, I can't sin against my God. You are a house boy, you are saying I can't sin against my God. So exploits of Joseph, even him being a firstborn of, of, of Jacob. You know Joseph became a firstborn because those who never knew their God like Ruben slept with the mother, the, the, the stepmothers. And when you read it in Genesis 49, the Bible says that you listen, that Ruben, you will not excel because you slept on my what? On my bed. And so who took up the first position? Not Judah. Judah has slept with Tamar, the daughter in law. And who took up the position of firstborn? Joseph, through Ephraim. In fact, Ephraim, when you mention the northern kingdom of, of Israel, the one called Israel. There is Judah, there is Israel. It is called Ephraim. In the Bible, it is called Ephraim. Why? Because Joseph took up the father's work, double portion. And he has two people, Manasseh and Ephraim. But Ephraim specifically became the firstborn. Joseph dominated. Ephraim dominates. David dominates in Judah. Solomon was very rich, but you know, Judah was being saved because of who? Because of David, the person who knows his God will go exploit. And how did was a David gotten? I normally say, Reverend, Samuel had said that uh, Shama, Shama is the firstborn should be the king. The, the father, Jesse, uh, you know, I have consecrated seven boys. David was not a monk, but he knew his God. And so let me ask you, it doesn't matter whether you're in a distant country. It doesn't matter whether you are, you are in exile. It doesn't matter whether you're recognized or not. It doesn't matter what matters. You know your God. And like David, they will call you. In fact, somebody said, we can't eat until when the young man arrives. And when he was coming, I don't know what was in his heart, but the person who knows his own body will do exploits. And I can continue, Ruth. The probability that Ruth went to the to green in the field of Boaz. What is the probability? But you see, she knew God. Your God will be my God. And let me tell you, Ruth has the Moabite did exploits. The other co-wife called the Opa, Opa, you can't even find her anywhere again in the Bible. Her name totally disappears. The person, I mean, this is now a widow, no husband, no future, but the person who knows their God, they will do exploits. She's mentioned among the what? Among the few women. In who are the grand grandmothers of Jesus. Now, Rahab the same thing. So I don't want to wear on those who know their God. And Rahab, the only thing she did was saving spies and telling them, I want your God. And the whole family was saved, and Rahab becomes the great grandmother of Jesus. So, ladies, from this platform, many of you sometimes you want to go and these other gods. Others of you want to go and use your own means in order to reach exploits. I want to beg you, like Ruth, like Esther, like many women, stand and seek your God. And he will cause exploits to happen through you. And those are both visible and invisible. Now, the definition of exploits. Exploits means things which are done and they can be attributed only to God. They are supernatural. In the, in the natural world, they call them what? Supernatural. That <coughs> are you telling me that you are, you know, that you are this? And they cannot understand. Why? Because it is supernatural. 
it will ensure that you get and derive full benefits of natural resources. That you are able to get full benefits as a child of God simply because you know you are God. So the definition is a heroic deed or achievement that is so great that cannot be defined using rational or known world things. So the Bible is full of men and women who did exploits for God. Reason is, those heroic deeds are because they knew their God. Goliath, tormenting Israel, the whole of Israel, for 40 days, including brothers of David. And David comes, not in military relief, but he knew his God. And he told him, what only God can tell him, that today I will cut your head off and feed you on the bodies of the, the air. And the whole world will know. And so may God anoint you like David, that wherever you go, Goliath us, we will be able to bring, be brought down. And that in the name of Jesus, yes, you will use and use your means to bring victory that is seen by all. And again, it can only be God. In fact, when you read, especially the Nunakwari of Chikabayu, Soro asked Abuna that who is this young man? Then Abuna said, Busoga and Dama in Nirunyankwari of Chikit means I can never know my Lord, Busoga and Dama, Tindikumuman, that I can't know this man. And so may God use you so that through those heroic deeds and exploits, you'll be able to show the great power of our God, his glory and his honor. I was speaking recently about the husband of Esther. The probability that Esther would become a queen when Vasta was still there was zero. But even the probability that this young Jew would become a queen was also minimal. But listen, the probability that the king in chapter six would lose sleep and the probability for him to ask books and they bring on Mordecai. Again, if you can't see God of exploits, what do you want to see? And I mentioned recently when we are celebrating Onesimus is in Jubilee, that the job description, the honor that Mordecai got was defined by his enemy number one. Those are great exploits, my friend. Where your enemy is helping you to write the shadow of duties. You will do this, you will do this, you will need this. That's Mordecai. And as Haman was taking him around the town, I don't think Mordecai was, you know, amused by Haman. No, he was amused by the great God. The God who does what? Exploits. And so, we have talked about Noah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Ruthie, Esther. You know, we have Joseph, we have now Mordecai and others. New Testament. <laughs> Exploits. When I read that these men are not educated, but they have turned the world upside down. Do you know he's saying it? Imagine the whole parliament meeting and the discussion are people who are fishermen. The highest educated was actually David. Matthew. The rest were fishermen, fishmonger. They even never had boats. They were, they were for their father and like sons of David. But listen, the spirit comes, empowers them, and they do exploits. Paul exploits, where he even told the king that I would want you to be like me, except for these things. The people who know their God will do exploits. And of course, when you see Mary and Martha, oh, no wonder Mary said, I can't live even in a death. Why? Because the man who resurrects our brother, I was talking to people recently about 
this man, 38 years, around the pool. He comes and tells him that John chapter 5, get away, walk, carry your mat. The man who had spent 38 years, so if a relative of that man, the people who know their God will do experience. Now I want to put, as I come towards the close, what God has done in your life into that perspective. Please, get like a torch. Go back the way you were born, where you went to school, how many people you were with, and begin counting those exploits, those exploits, those exploits. And if you can't now know that Gachari Mababa, then you have a challenge. And the problem of Christianity today is not lack of prayer or even lack of the capacity to read the word, but is lack of knowing the personality of their God that is able to do exploits. And so as the people who become now a community, Acts chapter 12, they are praying Peter is released. But when he's released, they can't believe. Acts chapter 13, thank God, people pray and fast, and the Spirit says, set me apart, Paul and Barnabas, meaning it is the community which knows their God, and therefore deployment is best on the Spirit of God. So as I come towards the close, do you know your God? Do you know your God? Do you know your God? Can you imagine that God? Do you know your God? Do you know his promises? And like Daniel is saying, what can he do? Yes, you are surrounded by very many things. They buffet you, they hit you, and sometimes you forget the reality of your God. But listen to this. There is a voice saying, yes, my daughter, yes, my son, it is me. Do not get worried. Even when they called him a ghost, Matthew chapter 14, from verse 22, when they called him a ghost, he still said, my sons, it is me, don't be afraid. And like Peter, ask him, Lord, if it is you, allow me to walk on water. May you walk on water. You know, again, the falling down. I mean, we concentrate on what happened to Peter. But we do not know that this man knew his God and he did exploits. How many have walked on top of water? So we are going to pray. As we pray, the situation might be so tough. Again, sometimes you hold these things and you feel like God has forgotten. But Daniel is reminding us this. That all you need is one thing to know you are God. And you can be able to help you leverage many things beyond what a human mind cannot find. Father, we thank you. But Daniel was a great man of wisdom. I pray for this. But that wisdom will be able to make them grow beyond the wisdom of this world. I also pray, Lord, that you who gives integrity that cannot be taken away, that you cause men and women to purify themselves, to consecrate themselves, so that these great exploits will be seen in their lives. So may integrity follow you wherever you go, so that when they mention your name, they will know the goodness of the Lord in the That like Daniel received respirations through prayer. That even in Amos 3 37, that we cannot do. And so, Lord, this I am a child. Reveal things about Uganda. Reveal things about our church. Reveal things about families and our lives so that we shall be able to do great exploits. 
because the answer lies with us, because we know you. We thank you, Lord. We pray this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God bless you. Father, we want to thank you so much for um, the word, Lord, that you, we have been uh, taught this evening, uh, your word, and Lord, that uh, we've also been encouraged, and Lord, that we've been challenged. Thank you, Lord, that you've given us the opportunity to know you, that we who are lost in, trans in our trespass, by your grace, you brought conviction about sin, about righteousness, about judgment. Lord, that you opened our eyes to know that in repentance and quietness, Lord, that would find rest in you. And now, Lord, I pray that where we departed from the right way, Lord, we pray again that you may have mercy and forgive us. We come before the throne of grace and mercy. Lord, that you may have mercy and forgive us. That we'll come back to a knowledge of you. Lord, where we have care, been careless and not associated ourselves <clears throat> with what is in your word, I pray, Lord, that those things that distract, those things that confuse, I pray, Lord, that their hold will die, that we will again take interest in your word so that we will get to know you. Lord, I pray that we will have fellowship with your Holy Spirit, our comforter, our teacher, our counselor, the one who shows us all things, the one who empowers us, the one who puts your divine fruit in us so that we can be a people who know you and do exploit. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Doreen, please continue. Oh, thank you. Thank you, James. Uh, sorry, I, I, I couldn't unmute myself for some reason. Thank you, Reverend Jasper, for the word, uh, for encouraging us this evening. Um, Reverend Jasper has given us homework, which I would like to point out. First of all, he told us to replace our names in that verse. That's verse 34 that talks about doing the exploits. So I've done mine. Doreen, who knows her God, shall be strong and carry out great exploits. So everyone, look for that verse and put your name there and decree it and declare it. But also Reverend pointed out uh, some questions for us to think about. Do you know your God? And do you know your value in the kingdom of God? He's given us several examples of people, both in the Old and the New Testament, uh, of uh, people and the exploits that they did. And he encouraged us that you can be the first one in your clan, in your family, in your office, in your business, in your marriage. You can be the first one to do a great exploit and you can be remembered for that uh, great exploit. But also, do you know the promises of God? Because if you don't know God's promises, then you don't know God and therefore you will not be able to do these great exploits. So let's receive the word and uh, we'll just um, uh, say a short prayer over it and then we'll ask Reverend Jasper to, to bless us as we leave. So Lord, we thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you, Lord, um, that when you speak, your word goes out and it brings transformation. So we receive your word this evening that the people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits, O oh Lord. The church that knows their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. So Lord, this evening I pray for everyone on the call, uh, for the church we represent, for the families we represent, for our nation, for our communities, Lord. Lord, that you will give us a burden to know you. And arising out of that knowledge, O oh God, we will be able to carry out great exploits. 
Lord, we thank you. Because if we look back over our lives, even as Reverend has charged us, that if we take a torch and point it out from the time we are born until where we are now, surely we can see the great exploits you have done through our life. So we thank you. We thank you for those exploits, oh God. So Lord, I pray that we will always remember that you're working powerfully behind the scenes, even when it seems like we don't see anything in the physical. The world uh, will throw so many, so much at us, and it is very um, tempting to fall into, to fit in the pattern of the world. And yet you've called us to be drawn out, oh Lord. So Lord, we ask that we will spend time with you so that we can know you truthfully and we'll be able to do the great exploits that you have called us to do that will cause transformation in our homes, in our marriages, in our families, in our children, Lord, in our church and in our nation. And so, Lord, we want to thank you for Reverend Jasper. Thank you for using him. Thank you for his family, O oh God. Father, we pray a blessing over him, the blessing of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Lord, we pray that you'll provide their every need as a family. Lord, we also pray that you'll continue to cover him with the precious blood of Jesus. There will be no backlash on him. Lord, we pray you'll, um, you will be with him and his family and you'll continue to grow him deeper in intimacy with you and that you'll continue to carry out the purpose for which you have called him on this earth. So we thank you, Lord, and we bless you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.